Chapter 16. Confidences. My mother's words consoled me and seemed to reorganize my inner energies. She talked about service as though it were a blessing to help us endure suffering and tribulation, which she regarded as actually being expressions of joy and valuable lessons. An indescribable and unexpected contentment bathed my spirit. These concepts nourished me in some strange way. I felt like a different man, more alive, happy, and cheerful. Oh, mother, I exclaimed, how marvelous the sphere where you live must be. What sublime spiritual thoughts, what bliss. She smiled and explained, higher spheres always require more work and greater self-denial, my son. Don't imagine that your mother spends all her time in beatific visions removed from her rightful duties. Now, I don't mean for any words to convey any tone of sadness about my situation. Rather, I want them to reveal how necessary responsibility is. Since I returned from earth, I've been working intensely for our spiritual renewal. Many spirits remain bound to their earth homes after they disincarnate, claiming they care about their loved ones too much to leave them behind. But here, I have been taught that in order to be beneficial, true love must work non-stop. So, since my arrival, I've been trying hard to win the right to help those we love so dearly. And Dad, I asked, where is he? Why didn't he come with you? My mother's face took on an odd expression as she answered, Oh, your father, your father. He has been in a region of thick darkness in the umbral for twelve years. When he was with us, he always seemed faithful to family traditions and was meticulous in observing the chivalry of the upper business circles, to which he belonged until the end of his days. He also seemed fervent in his outward worship in church, but deep down he was weak and maintained clandestine liaisons on the side. Two of his lovers were mentally tied to a vast network of evil spirits. As soon as my poor Lerette discarnated, he faced an extremely bitter sojourn in the umbral. He had made a lot of promises to those two unfortunate creatures, and they were waiting anxiously to involve him in their web of illusion once more. At first, he tried to resist and made every possible effort to find me. But he couldn't understand that after death, the soul will live according to its intrinsic nature. So, Lerette perceived neither my spiritual presence nor the devoted assistance of some of our friends. Having spent so many years pretending, he had damaged his spirit sight and had restricted his vibratory range. As a result, he found himself alone with those to whom he had thoughtlessly attuned his heart and mind. Family principles and his love for us nevertheless worried his spirit for some time. Somehow, he fought to repel temptation, but finally fell once again to be surrounded in darkness due to his lack of perseverance and correct thinking. Very impressed, I asked, but isn't there a way to pull him out of such infamy? Alas, my son, explained my mother, I visit him frequently, but he doesn't even know I'm there. His vibratory strength is still too low. I've tried to inspire him to return to the right path, but the only result so far is that he has shed a few tears of regret from time to time without any serious decision to change. Those poor women keep him prisoner and intercept all my suggestions. I've been working intensely for years on end to have enlisted the assistance of friends in five different centers of higher spiritual activity, including Nosolar. Once, Clarencio almost succeeded in attracting him to the Ministry of Regeneration, but failed. One cannot light a lamp that has neither wick nor oil. We need Lorette's mental cooperation in order to lift him up and open his spirit's sight. However, the poor man remains internally inactive, wavering between indifference and rebellion. After a long pause, she sighed and continued, 
Perhaps you haven't heard that your sisters Clara and Priscilla are also living in the umbral and are bound to the earth's surface. I am compelled to attend to everyone's needs, and my only direct help has been the affectionate cooperation of your sister Louisa, who passed over when you were still a baby. She waited for me here for many years, and has been my right hand in the strenuous task of assisting our earthly family. After having fought bravely by my side on behalf of your father, your sisters, and yourself, and because the disturbance in our still incarnate family members is so great, she returned last week in order to reincarnate among them in a heroic gesture of sublime selflessness. So I hope you will soon recover so we can double our activities of goodness. I was surprised by the information about my father. What sort of struggles could he be facing? Hadn't he seemed to be a faithful observer of religious precepts? Didn't he take communion every Sunday? Fascinated by my mother's devotion, I asked, So you helped Dad in spite of his involvement with those wicked women? No, don't call them that, said my mother. Instead, call them our sick, ignorant, or unfortunate sisters. They, too, are children of our father. I've been interceding not only on Lorette's behalf, but also on theirs, and I'm sure I have finally found a way to attract them all to my heart. I was really taken by such a display of selflessness. Then, all of a sudden, I thought of my own family. I felt the old yearning for my wife and my dear children. While with Clarencio and Lysias, I had always managed to restrain my feelings and refrain from asking any questions. But my mother's look encouraged me to speak. Something made me sense that my mother wouldn't be staying much longer. I availed myself of the opportunity, inquiring, Since you have been assisting Dad so devoutly, couldn't you also give me some news about Zelia and the kids? I'm anxiously waiting for the time when I can return home to help them. Oh, they surely must miss me as much as I miss them. How my poor wife must be suffering from this separation. My mother smiled sadly and added, I visited my grandkids from time to time. They are well. And after thinking for a few moments, she said, Don't worry about helping your family for now. First of all, prepare yourself so that we may be successful. There are issues that we must entrust to the Lord in thought before we work on solving them. I wanted to insist on the subject in order to gather some details, but my mother wouldn't hear of it and carefully avoided it. Our conversation lasted for quite some time and seemed to enwrap me in sublime comfort. A while later, she rose to say goodbye. Since I was curious to know how she had been living so far, I asked if I could go with her. She hugged me and said, You can't, my son. I'm urgently expected at the Ministry of Communication, where I will be provided with fluidic resources in the transformation chambers for my return journey. Besides, I still have to visit Minister Celio in order to thank him for the opportunity of this visit. She kissed me and left, leaving a lasting impression of happiness on my soul.